Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we want to get a basic understanding of the DAO object library so we can access the data in our database from our VBA code. So let's get started. This is a, a kind of a diagram that'll get us started with the idea of the object model. To get started here, what we want to see is the fact that when you start access, it starts the database engine. Okay, that's just the underlying software that runs everything. The workspace is the active user session. So you as an active user programming or working with your data, you are working in a workspace. Then there's the database that represents the open access file. Now I say the access file because the access file then contains all of the other tables, queries, a record set, which we'll define here shortly, the relationships, and then the ultimate container that holds all of those items, okay? So let's move on and kind of start defining what each of these are. First, the table definitions. The table defs allow you to build tables and to modify the properties of those tables. We're not touching the data yet. So when we start here, we're going to dimension DADB as a database. We're going to have a variable that has, um, we're going to have a variable that has a table definition. Then we're going to build a constant and we're going to create a table called my temp table. Okay. So those three items get us started. We're going to set the database variable as the current database. In other words, the current database we have saved on the hard drive that the access database engine is working with. Okay. Because we're running the, I'm running this code over and over to test it and so forth. I need a little bit of a code there to delete the table if it already exists. So this is just a little snippet of code that says I'm going to ignore any errors if it doesn't exist but I'm going to delete it if it does. So then we're going to create the table definition object itself. The table is the structure and it doesn't have any fields in it yet. But you notice here that DADB create table definition is given the variable my temp table. Okay. So that now it has a table name and now it has a structure that we can put fields into. The next section is putting the fields into. So we're going to append fields and we're going to use the create field command to create a first name, last name, and phone number field. They're all going to be text fields. Notice there's no size to those text fields. So they're all going to be the default 255 short text fields. Then we're going to append the table that we've just created to DATDF, we're going to append it then to the database. The next thing that I want to show you is how to then display all of your current table definitions in the database. Now I say all of the table definitions because simply there's going to be more tables than just the ones you create. And I'll show you here in a sec. You're, you should be familiar with the fact that we can debug.print out to our immediate window. And so we're going to print to the immediate window the table definitions count the total number of tables and table definitions in dot name, which is the name of the current database. Okay. So then we're for each table definition in table defs, we're going to print the name of each table. Okay. And then we're going to close it. So there we go. And the way it looks then is we've got 20 table defs in the table understanding DAO.ACCDB. And it gives you the raw place on the hard drive where we opened the table from or the database from. Now notice there's a bunch of system tables up above. And then there's the actual user tables down below, including my temp table that's right in the middle of the two sections. Now, the way it looks on your hard drive in the navigation pane starts with my temp table and alphabetically lists those tables that I show on my list. So let's create a new query definition. You'll notice that this is so strikingly similar to a table definition that there's going to be a lot of common items like the top here is a very common item 
we're going to define it. We're going to set a database variable. We're going to set a query definition variable. Then we're going to set the name of the query definition. So we're going to set that as a constant. Then we're going to set the current the current DB as DADB. Then we've got the same on error resume next. You know, ignore the error here if we when we try to delete. S query name, if it doesn't already exist, we're trying to delete it, we're going to ignore that error. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the query definition to be a select statement from the table customers. So we're going to create query def, give it the name of the query, and then give it the contents of the actual query in, in the SQL there. Then we're just going to close. Okay. So Next, we want to go look at record sets. Okay, record sets are tables, da data from a single table in Access. We have a Dyna set, that's data from a, any table or query. Now, specifically, if we set it as a table, it has to be a native Access table. In other words, in that Access container. And if it's not in that access container, if it's a linked table or a linked query, we need to use a Dynaset. So Dynaset can use, can do it in all cases where a table is re somewhat restricted. So obviously then you're going to use Dynaset a whole lot more than you'll use table, especially if you deal with linked queries from Oracle or SQL Server or other databases and have tables or queries that are coming from there. You would use a Dynaset there if you want to edit them. And you would use a snapshot if you're not concerned about editing them in your VBA code. So the only difference between Dynaset and Snapshot is simply Dynasets allow you to edit the data in the table or query. Snapshot allow, does not allow you to edit the data. And that can be useful because snapshots just move a lot faster, especially if you have a lot uh, large data set. Okay. So let's open a record set. You'll see at the beginning, we have a very common thing. We're going to set a couple of variables, a data set database variable, and now a record set variable. We're going to set an index uh, integer, and then we're going to set the database as the current database. We're going to tell it to open a record set, and that's going to be table customers. So in this case, we've got a native table, table customers, and we're just going to directly open that table. And then while the record set is not yet to the end of file, so EOF. I'll go into more, more detail on end of file here in, in the next couple of screens, but uh, until we get to the end of file, we're going to keep looping through the database. And the next part of the loop is going to be to loop through the fields of each table. So we're going to look at the record set, we're going to look at the fields, and we're going to have an account of those fields minus one. So we're going to go from I to the count minus one, and we're going to then print the fields with the name and then the value in the field. Then we're going to next print a space, and then next we're going to move to the next record, and then we hit our loop command, bringing it back up to the do while. So it goes through this process again until it gets to the end of file. Then we're going to go ahead and close and de uh, deconstruct our variables there. And what that looks like when we're done is in the immediate window is this. You see it's outputting all the field names and the contents of the fields for each record. So it's starting with customer ID 25. And I only showed you two records here because it got quite long. As you can see, the scroll bar on the right hand side there was very long and, and scrolled for quite a ways. But I'll show you two records to kind of give you the idea that our debug.print is printing the name and then the value in each of those fields, putting a space in between the different records and then moving on to the next record. So how do we navigate through a record set? There's a lot of different commands that you can use to navigate through a record set. We've talked about move next so far, but there's a, several others. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and open a record set to table customers again. So the top part of this is pretty much all the same. This time, Notice that the open record set command requires you to tell it it's a DB open table. We could say that that was going to be a DB open Dynaset, or we could have said DB open snapshot as well. All three of them would have applied here. We've decided to open table because it's the most direct way to open a table in particular. So the first debug.print is 
going to print the first record because every time you open it fresh, it points to the first record. Then we're going to move to the next record and then we'll print it again. Then we're going to say, let's move to the last record. We're, so we're going to use move last. The next one, move previous. So along with a move last, there's a move, move next, there's a move previous. Well, along with a move last, there's a move first uh, command as well. So the way this ends up looking in the immediate window is it went to that first record. It went to the second record, then it went to the last record, then it went to the previous record, and back to the first record. So that's the way we navigate when we're in a record set. Now, those are the three main items that you're going to use, along with end of file and beginning of file. Now, they become useful, especially when you're doing loops. So you'll notice here, we're going to have a query here. So we're going to set up a record set that is pointed to a query. And so in this command, we're going to open a record set. We're going to give it the SQL and we're going to tell it it's going to be a Dyna set. Okay. So we're just doing worried about a read only set here. Then we're going to start at the beginning of file. And if the end of file and beginning of file are the same, we're just going to output a message that says, no records to process because when are, when there's no records in a table, the EOF and BOF end of file, beginning of file are both the same record, essentially both pointing to no record. Okay. Then if it makes it through the error trap there to say we've got no records then we're going to start at the do until the end of file. Okay. Start at the beginning, do until the end of file and we're going to print the company name. We're going to move next and continue looping. Okay. Now, after we've done looping through that table, we're going to then go and set the record to the last record. We're going to do another do loop starting at the end of the file and go to the beginning of file. So do until the beginning of file, we're going to use a move previous command as we loop through. So we'll go from the bottom up. So we use the move last. And then we used beginning a file. Now, when it go, we look at the immediate window, we see grandma's closet. We see rocking and rolling and going on through. We see your favorite things in there twice. Now that's because when we got, went from beginning of file to the end of file, we had your favorite things. Then when we said move last to make sure it was on that last record, then we started moving previous and going up the list until we got back to grandma's closet. So you can see there we have one way direction through and then the other direction through. And that's how we navigate uh, those records. So if you find value in the things that we're taught in this video, please hit that like button and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.